we have arrived. Week one picks for every game right here on the Odd Shopper channel. I'm Dave Lochran. Glad to have you back. If you're your first time here, welcome. And of course, if you're looking for any other information outside of YouTube, hit me up on X, Lafay underscore D, L-O-U-G-H-Y underscore D. Hit me up in the Picks Marketplace on Discord over at Odd Shopper. I'll talk about that later. But I'll spare you guys the pleasantries. I'll ask you this, though. Hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and let's talk football. I know it's the, you don't want to hear me talk. Not about this, at least. Let's get into the picks right now. Thursday night football, Ravens at the Chiefs. I'll have an entirely different video for this as well with a side and, and, uh, and props coming out Thursday. I do the same thing for Monday night. Uh, Chiefs, two and a half point favorites, 47 point total. You know, they lost Legereus Sneed. They lost Willie Gay, but this should still be a really strong defense for the Kansas City Chiefs. You could say the same about Baltimore, too. They, they lose Mike McDonald, but they can plug and play pretty much anybody, and it doesn't make a difference. That defense is still going to be elite. Either way, really tough to bet against Patrick Mahomes. Am I wrong? Four and a half point dogs in the playoffs. They end up beating them because Baltimore gets pass happy. They win what was a 17-10. It's just every time you think you can't bet on Mahomes, you don't bet on Mahomes. And then Mahomes makes you pay. Look, I know he hasn't been great against the spread uh, as a favorite, but usually he's a much larger favorite in these spots, like a lot bigger than two and a half. And last year when they lost to the Lions in week one, I bet you guys remember this. First of all, Rashi Rice hadn't blossomed into a, a, a star player yet. And Kadarius Toney was the best offensive player for the Detroit Lions. I mean, the drops, the tip balls to, to interceptions, it was terrible across the board. And, and now, look, Rice is a stud. Xavier Worthy injects immediate speed into this offense. We already saw how he was utilized uh, in the preseason. Like, first-team offense. Hollywood Brown is out. Xavier Worthy is going to be here. I mean, he's going to be a factor. And then you have, we didn't even talk about Kelsey and Pacheco, and, of course, Patrick Mahomes. So, don't get me wrong. Betting against John Harbaugh in week one, first of all, is, is really – this is such a tough game, right? Because Harbaugh is like, what – 16 and four or something in week one all time it's tough and and betting against john harbaugh as a dog all of that stuff sucks but it's less fun than betting against patrick mahomes as a short favorite in the season opener at home this is at three minus three in most spots but i'd pay a little bit extra if you're betting this one to get the two and a half where you can because they are out there chiefs minus two and a half this is going to be a great game packers at the eagles yeah, let's let's applaud the NFL for having a, a game in, in Brazil for week one. The players are thrilled about this. They're not. Eagles are two and a half point favorites, 48 and a half point total. Uh, these prime time, time games are usually always pretty tough, right? Uh, and it makes it even more difficult given that it's in Brazil. But the public's pretty hyped on the Packers, and I get that. You know, they smoked the Cowboys in the postseason last year, kind of came out of nowhere. Jordan Love started off the season terribly. I was shitting on him for the first however many games. And by the way, I wasn't wrong. He wasn't good. Uh, and then he turned the season around in a massive way. Like, okay, well, Jordan Love looks pretty damn good. But here's the, they also have a lot of great talent, young talent on offense. Um, they, they A defense that should be much improved under new D.C. Jeff Hafley. But... I still see this matchup as one that slightly favors Philly. And sometimes you can get yourself into trouble by like just looking at things on paper. Trust me, I've made those mistakes in the past. Just looking at things on paper can get you into trouble. But even still, even with the departure of Jason Kelsey, and, and I will fall back on that stuff when I don't have much else to go to, this should still be a dominant offensive line for Philly. They, they have one of the strongest D-lines in football, and an embarrassment of proven riches on offense. Like, you have A.J. Brown, you have Devontae Smith, you have Dallas Goddard. I'm not saying he's a stud, but he's good. And now the addition of Saquon Barkley, all at Jalen Hurts' disposal. And they fell off a cliff late last season. You probably remember if you watched this, because I think we were betting against the Eagles every week as big favorites. Um and the secondary was the biggest concern, but they drafted first rounder Quinion Mitchell. They brought back CJ Gardner Johnson and they cleaned house at the coordinator positions as well. If this was three and a half, I'd be looking elsewhere, but Philly's inside of a field goal here. It just feels right. Give me Philly minus two and a half. Cardinals at Bills. Bills six and a half point favorites, 48 point total. And I should point out to you guys, look, number one, let me know where you're at in the comments, what you're with me on, what you're against me on. Um, you don't need to be an asshole, but if you feel the need to be, I'm okay with that too. I've seen plenty of worse comments in my day. But what I was going to say is, if there's certain spots you just don't like, 
fade them. So there's certain spots you go, hey, you know, I didn't know that stat or, or I didn't know that trend. And any even one or two spots helps you, tail it. And we'll try and have a good week. But, um, you know, I have a good amount of dogs coming up in this video, I promise you. You're not going to like a lot of them. And I've gone back and forth on this one, but I keep landing in the same place with this Cardinals and Bills game. The Cardinals had the worst defense in football last season, and, and I'm really not sure how much that changes this year. They drafted four defensive players in the first four rounds. Okay, great. But what type of impact are they going to have in week one, if any? Um, and the Bills lost Jordan Poor. They lost Mike, Mike, Micah Hyde. Um, Matt Milano went down as well. They also lost Stefan Diggs and Gabe Davis. So it's a totally different looking team for sure. But they still have a ton of talent in the defensive backfield uh, and overall way more talent than Arizona. I haven't bet this game. And by the way, I should point out that Sean McDermott can coach defenses up as good as anybody. It's not one of my favorite games. I would lean Buffalo six and a half, even with fewer offensive weapons than last year. I just, I don't know how they're slowed down by this Cardinals defense, but the problem is when you're betting big favorites in week one, typically it doesn't work out for you. But that also doesn't mean that, that I'm betting the Cardinals. You see what I'm saying here? So we have 16 games. For me, this is more so a fade, but it's called picks for every game. So I'll lean Buffalo minus six and a half because of that Arizona defense. But I wouldn't be surprised if this is a close game at all. I'm going to drop some props from this game for sure uh, in the marketplace and the Discord over on Odd Chopper. Uh, but for right now, I'm staying away from the spread. Patriots at the Bengals. Bengals laying eight points, 40 and a half point total. This is the biggest spread of any game on the slate, right? Bigger than the Seattle game, bigger than the Buffalo game. Uh, I just don't want to lay eight points. First of all, we don't know what the hell is going on with Jamar Chase. I'm recording this on Wednesday afternoon. I know he was in, he was in, in uniform, but... Where has he been, right? What, what, how is that going to, to materialize on Sunday? Um, and if you're looking, look, big dogs in week one have been profitable. That's just the way it is. I think it's like a 69 point or 68% uh, hit rate on, on dogs of six and a half plus points. So keep that in mind. That would mean that New England looks good here. Now, I'm not betting the spread. And, and obviously, nobody wants to bet the Patriots ever, uh, given their roster construction. But here's the truth. Even with Matthew Judon missing for like what almost all but four games last season the Patriots still had a pretty solid defense I'm not touching the spread but I actually like Cincinnati under 24 and a half points yeah this is 23 and a half points you look at it differently but a key number like that at 24 I actually like the Bengals under 24 and a half points here so you know maybe they don't cover uh but you know holding Cincinnati to or maybe Holding Cincinnati under 24 and a half seems logical or at least very reasonable given the talent that is still on that Patriots defense. Well, I told you we were going to get to some dogs, but I bet you didn't think it'd be the Giants. Vikings, hear me out on this one. Vikings at the Giants. Giants are one and a half point home dogs, 41 point total. Everyone hates Daniel Jones at this stage of the game. And if you saw his performance throughout that half, against Houston in the preseason. It probably only confirmed your long-held beliefs that the guy stinks. Now, granted, he was coming back from an ACL. Um, you aren't going to love this, but I like the Giants in this game. First off, I think Malik Neighbors makes an immediate impact. Actually, I have a I have a play that you guys will absolutely love uh, that I dropped in the marketplace earlier this morning. Uh, download the Odd Shopper app. Link's in the description and in, and in the pinned comment. Download the app or do it on your desktop, right? Uh, if you use that link and you want to sign up for my marketplace subscription, uh, where I'm giving, look, we're going straight bets for sure because we want to make a profit. But also, we've got some ladder plays. We've got some lotto tickets for sure. Uh, some same game parlays. We hit some big ones in the playoffs last year as well, like that Baker Mayfield, Mike Evans one. Um, and we're going to look to run all of that back again this year. But if you join right now, 50%, actually not right now, I'm running this for anyone that wants to try it out for their first week. 50% off a week, 50% off a month, a week, $4.99, a month, $14.99. That's less than a cup of Starbucks coffee. I don't know who drinks that, but it's less. And that's less than probably a meal at McDonald's right now for the entirety of the month. So you want to come hang out, get some great plays, sweat some great bets, some long shots as well, and help support your boy while you're at it. Come check me out in the marketplace. Make sure to download the app though when you join because you'll get push notifications straight to your phone. But I've got, and like I said, in the description and the pinned comment, but boy, do I have a great Malik Neighbors prop play. Maybe a ladder play, actually, that we dropped in there today. We also dropped some stuff for the Giants earlier in the week. You know, here's my thing about the Giants. Daniel Jones hasn't been reliably healthy. He hasn't had a reliably healthy offensive line either, right? 
And he hasn't had any reliable weapons in the offense. The offensive line's been banged up. They could be, they, they're not going to be great this year, but they're going to be better if they stay healthy, at least in week one. And the D-line could be legitimately good. I mean, you have Brian Burns. He's an elite player. Dexter Lawrence is an elite talent. Kayvon Thibodeau had 13 sacks last year. He can get to the quarterback. And the secondary suspect, but pressuring Sam Darnold should mitigate those concerns. Think about this. Sorry, I get hyped up about it. Watch, they're just going to lose by 50 now. But I think my logic stands. Um, you don't have to love Daniel Jones. I don't love him either. But you'd be hard-pressed to make a strong argument in favor of Sam Darnold being a road favorite. Am I wrong? Like, I honestly think the Giants have the advantage here, as ugly as it looks. And, and despite her being a reputable DC, Brian Flores' defense was average at best in 2023. So, you know, the addition of, of neighbors, the defensive line against a, an okay offensive line for the Vikings, but also a guy that gets spooked, sees ghosts, remember, in Sam Darnold. Yeah, you have Jefferson. I love Aaron Jones. Don't get me wrong. But I think the Giants have all of the ingredients to win this game. They're one and a half point dogs at home against Sam Darnold. What else can I say? Steelers at the Falcons. Falcons three and a half point favorites, 42 point total. I actually liked the Falcons before this move to three and a half. At this number, I just don't have a lot of interest in. And I'm sure people would be surprised. Like, oh, you liked Atlanta. Um, Pittsburgh's defense is so good. TJ Watt, Mike Tomlin's amazing, particularly as a dog. And you're, you wouldn't be wrong at all. I'm just so completely out on Russell Wilson. That's the thing here. Like, and I know you can't read too much into the preseason, but he was just abhorrent in the preseason. And if you want to be like, no, but how about week three against the Lions? Yeah, he's facing second and third team. So half those guys didn't even make the team. You know, I, I, horrible last year with Denver too. And who are the pass catchers behind George Pickens, right? You have Roman Wilson, who we don't even know he's going to play. He got hurt on the 30th of July. Hasn't practiced since. Um, you have Van Jefferson, Calvin Austin, Pat Fryer move. Warren's banged up in the backfield as well. I also think this Falcons defense is going to be much improved. They added Matthew Jude, and they have a pen potentially lethal secondary that improved a ton last year. But then on the other side, Kirk Cousins making his first start since tearing his ACL with a brand new team. Kyle Pitts is now dealing with a hamstring issue. I think I'm just going to grab the under on this game. Give me under 42 between the Steelers and Falcons to kick off the year. Texans and the Colts. All right, Colts plus three, 48 and a half point total. This is the easiest one of the week for me. And I don't mean it's easy in the sense that it's a guaranteed win. If you think that there are guaranteed wins betting spreads in the NFL, you either haven't done it long enough or or you're, you, run lo you run better than anyone else in the world because it's just... You know, look, I know the video is called Laffy's Locks, but that was done simply for alliteration purposes. I, look, it's easy in the sense that you have a home dog, a divisional home dog at three points, at a three point dog. This isn't even two and a half anymore. Look, Straub was awesome in, in year one, and Houston's loaded with talent. They brought Diggs in as well. They got Joe Mixon. I don't really think that moved the needle, but maybe you do. But Anthony Richardson's no slouch. And this Colts team can go blow for blow, a, a punch for punch at home on Sunday. And hat tip to uh, Steve Mackinnon from VSIN for this one. Division home dogs, get this. Divi this is why I say, you know, like you just kind of have to bet this whether you like it or not. Division home dogs are 18, 9, and 2 straight up in week one and 23 and 6 against the spread, 79% since 2009. Colts plus three. Jags at Dolphins. Dolphins three-point favorites, 49-point total. I struggle with this one because I think Miami's secondary could be legitimately dominant this season. They, they added Jordan Poyer, Kendall Fuller as well. Clearly, and we'll talk about it later, the best cover corner for Washington last year. Now they don't have shit. Uh, Jalen Ramsey's still there as well. But can they generate enough pressure on defense? That's the question. And Jacksonville, they brought in Ryan Nielsen, their new DC. Uh, the defense has a lot of talent to work with, no doubt. And both, both offenses have weapons, but as far as like game-breaking upside edge it goes, it, you have to hand it to Miami. Look, I got to go Miami minus three here, and I don't love it. I really don't. I wanted to go Jags. Um, and if you want Jags, there's three and a halfs out there. Don't bet the three. Find the three and a half. Find the sports book that has the three and a half and bet that, please. If nothing else, shop the odds every single week. Uh, but this one's where I'm going to land. Brand new defensive scheme for Jacksonville. Way different than before. New additions on offense. 
I got to bite the bullet and go Miami here at home. By the way, the weather seemed to be an issue, but it looks fine. Miami minus three. Titans at the Bears. Bears laying four, 44 and a half point total. Do we just bet the trend here, right? Should we just bet the trend? We did it last year with Bryce Young and it worked out quite well against the Atlanta Falcons. What trend? Oh, I'll tell you. The trend with quarterbacks drafted first overall in their first game trend. And yes, it's real. Shout out to Evan Abrams for this. Dude does phenomenal work as far as these trends go. Um, since the merger in 1970, 27 quarterbacks have been drafted first overall. They're 4, 22, and 1 straight up. And 7 and 20 against the spread. With the last quarterback to win in week one, straight up, being David Carr in 2002. Are you kidding me? Look, Caleb Williams is going to be good. I think we all have a pretty good feeling. The guy's probably going to be pretty good. But I will say, I watched every preseason snap. And while there was some real magic happening in times, you know, he looked good against Buffalo for sure. Um, he had three straight three and outs against the Bengals' second unit and some third stringers in there. The whole first quarter, they had three and outs. They got nothing going. They had no first downs. And then he opened it up a bit in the second quarter. You'd be like, well, Lafayette, what are you talking about? That's one game in the preseason. For sure. All I'm saying is that growing pains happen with num with quarterbacks, rookie quarterbacks, even number one overall quarterbacks. Wait till I get to Carolina. You're going to really hate me. Um, the Titans aren't an easy team to run on either. They also bolstered their secondary. I wouldn't be surprised to see some growing pains in week one for Caleb Williams. And look, that trend is wild. That's wild. Go, go back and listen again. That trend is crazy. I'm not saying Chicago isn't going to be way better on both sides of the ball either. I think, trust me, that's not what I'm saying. I think they will be. But it's four-point favorites against the non-conference team with the number one overall pick at quarterback going in week one. All signs point towards the Titans here, my friends. Titans plus four at Chicago. Panthers at the Saints. Saints minus four and a half, 41 and a half point total. You know, if you're new to betting, you're going to look at some of these and be like, what is this guy talking about? I get that. You know, I would have thought the same thing, but like football is just not all on paper. It's not, you know, and sometimes you have to look beyond that. It's unlike any other sport for sure. Um, and I learned from a lot of people that are so much smarter than me. And I always used to be like, dude, why, how are you betting them? And I bet the opposite side and lose. Not saying that's what's going to happen here, but I can tell you this play is going to make you feel disgusted. Here we go. So on our DFS channel, Daily Fantasy Sports, my good friend, Ben Rasa and I, um, you see him here on the channel all the time. He's a brilliant better. I've learned so much from that guy. We do a segment every Tuesday called Goblin of the Week, and it's dedicated to coaches or players who just made completely unthinkably boneheaded decisions and are just off. Two years ago, it was Goblin of the Week presented by Nathaniel Hackett. He's gone. Last year, it was Goblin of the Week presented by Brandon Staley. He's gone, so we're on track. We think, actually, this year it's Brandon Staley. I'm sorry. Uh, next year, we think it's going to be Goblin of the Week presented by Dennis Allen. Okay. Now, what I mean by that is that Dennis Allen is not a good coach. He might not make crazy bad decisions that are all over, you know, the, the social media and stuff, but he's not a good coach. And Derek Carr is not a particularly good quarterback either. Um, so if I'm getting Carolina at plus four and a half, forgive me, but I'm taking it. Short divisional road dog in week one is usually a pretty good bet as well. That's what the trends tell us. And look, I don't expect the Panthers to be world beaters this season. Don't go out and bet them, you know, alt wins at nine and a half. Losing Brian Burns hurts them too, but I expect them to be better. Frank Reich was terrible at developing Bryce Young. He, we even found out later that he didn't even want him in the first place. He wanted Stroud. He would have been right, by the way. Uh, and the Panthers had very little on offense to speak of. Call me crazy, but I think the addition of Deontay Johnson pays immediate dividends, too. He gets open as good as anybody, um, and that's exactly what a young quarterback needs. So uh, it's gross. This is less of uh, an endorsement of the Panthers and more of an indictment upon Dennis Allen and Derek Carr. Here we go. Give me Panthers plus four and a half. And by the way, guys, if you've heard about our DFS channel, we this th that was here, our stochastic DFS channel and our website was around long before Odd Shopper. We have a promo going for week one if you've ever wanted to dig into this. One single dollar for the entirety of the week for every single tool that we have. That means Thursday night football, million dollars up top to first place. Friday night, all of Sunday, all of Monday, all of those slates. Think of it like this. 
Think about you're building a nine player parlay with a shot at winning a million dollars. That's what it is every single week. Link is in the description and in chat for that. One dollar gets you every single tool that we have on the site. These are tools that, and Brody, you can throw them on. The, we had million dollar winners, many of them. Last year, two separate million dollar winners using the tools. And just two days ago, we had a million dollar winner as well using the stochastic tools. So for a buck, if you wanted to check it out, if you hate it, you're down essentially nothing. Who knows? Maybe you have a great week and hang out with us on the other side, outside of just betting. But we'd love to see you over there. And the tools are proven to have won people. I can say with confidence, millions of dollars. Broncos at the Saint Seahawks. Sorry, five and a half point spread. Seahawks favorite, 41 and a half point total. Hey, I'm a big fan of Bonex. I actually think he's going to be good. But my God, what a spot to start out your career. I mean, in Seattle, you got the 12th man, uh, new head coach and Mike McDonald for, for Seattle. Uh, great defensive coach, but like I said, you could probably put anyone in, in Baltimore and, and they'd look great. I, I, he, he has a reputation for being good, though. Uh, it's just a really tough spot for Bo Nix. I mean, if he goes into Seattle and balls out, you're going to be looking at a heavy shift in offensive rookie of the year come Monday. But honestly, even if he does, the Broncos are just in, in a complete rebuild mode on defense outside of Patrick Sertan, who just got inked to a huge deal. I, I'm going to be dropping some props in my marketplace um they'll pop up on the app if you have it in the discord as well for this one so stay tuned for that i think there are some great ones in the passing game for seattle and i'm not even particularly high on seattle this season but geno smith should have a lot of time to throw against a completely suspect secondary and this seattle defense gets i mean they get a rookie quarterback making his first start on the road with the 12th man too many signs toward, point towards Seattle. You know, if this was six and a half, I'd be looking at it differently, but it moved to five and a half. So you're getting Seattle inside of six. Maybe this is a trap game and I'm just missing it, which is entirely possible. But inside of six, give me Seattle minus five. And I like Bo Nix. I do. I promise. Raiders at the Chargers. All right. So people love the Raiders this week. I don't. Jim Harbaugh is a proven winner. A proven winner. He's 4-0 in week one, big sample, right, uh, as an NFL head coach. But he's 42-27-3 against the spread overall. And, and I'm not buying into Gardner Minshew, although I love Devontae Adams. Everyone should love Devontae Adams. He's the man. But he's only one player. You still have Zamir White in the backfield, Gardner Minshew at quarterback. I, I don't think you're replicating the same magic that we've seen with Gardner Minshew in the past. And, and Vegas has some really nice pieces on defense, obviously, right? Like you look at that pass rush, it's really good. It's one of the best in football. But at the same time, you have Jim Harbaugh and you have, you have Greg Roman at the helm. And I just expect a really run-heavy approach. Drag this game out. This isn't the popular play here, but sometimes you have to go against the grain. Let me know in the comments where you stand on this one. I'm happy to listen. I read and try and respond to all of them. The biggest question is Justin Herbert's foot. But the dude's a warrior and he's going to be ready for week one. Jim Harbaugh said he looked great in practice. So assuming that's not just entirely bullshit coach speak, I think he's going to be good to go. Chargers minus three. Cowboys at the Browns. All right. Browns are two and a half point favorites. It's not a playoff game for the Cowboys. So guess what? I have no problem taking a good hard look at them for this one. Even plus 120 on the money line doesn't look that bad either. I mean, what has Deshaun, uh, Deshaun Watson done to prove that, that he's going to be better this year? Outside of what they say about training camp. He hasn't shown anything literally since the COVID season back in 2020. And his offensive line is banged up heading into week one against the ferocious Dallas pass rush. I don't take anything away from this, this, this Browns defense at all. They are stellar. But the Cowboys are no slouch either. I don't think they should be two and a half point dogs on the road until we can see that Deshaun Watson is a competent, semi-competent quarterback again and has the protection he needs with this banged up offensive line. Give me Cowboys plus two and a half or sprinkle that money line at plus 120. Commanders at the Bucks. Buccaneers minus three, 44 point total here. I, I got to say, I don't love this game and here is why. Last year, the Commanders defense was just pitiful. They gave up what felt like 10 explosive plays every single game. Okay, we remember that. Emmanuel Forbes was a disaster. The secondary in general was a disaster and they couldn't stop the ground game either. Oh, and they lost Kendall Fuller, who was their best corner. Uh, in 2023 so the question now is can dan quinn and joe witt jr fix this this unit in a hurry and i don't know if they can and that's the tough thing about week one because there's so many unknowns but the big story obviously is Jaden daniels in week one 
and rightfully so, but he's a, he's a, he's a rookie starting his first game on the road. And I know people hate the Bucks this year, and I don't fully blame them. Yeah, they, they got lucky last year in a lot of spots. They ran into a, a terrible Eagles meltdown in the postseason. They got into the playoffs at 9-8, and eight, whatever. They weren't nearly as good as their trip to the playoffs, second round of the playoffs would suggest. Um, and I plan on cooking up a same-game parlay for this one. We'll drop that in the Discord as well. Again, link in the description chat or a, a pinned comment if you missed it earlier. But I, I'm just hoping Washington's defense is still bad, at least in week one. And that we can recreate some of this Bucks magic from last year. I would lean Bucks minus three here, but I don't love it. Three is out there. Three and a half is out there. But if you're going to bet it, bet three. If you're going to bet Washington, bet three and a half. Rams at the Lions. Lions minus three and a half. 50 and a half point total. This all comes down to one thing for me. The trenches. Okay. The Rams are dealing with injuries. They're dealing with suspensions. And they're dealing with shuffling everybody around. All of that just on the offensive line. The Lions can get a ton of pressure on the other hand. Aiden, Aiden Hutchinson is a one-man wrecking crew all by himself. I guess that's what a one-man wrecking crew is. I didn't need to add the last part. But you know, Aaron Donald is gone too. And that hurts the D-line for LA. They could have a good secondary, no doubt about it. But it's a week one primetime matchup. I certainly don't expect the Rams to just lay down at all. But the Rams have an uphill battle here for sure. And as we talk about this often, and we will throughout the year, the battle in the trenches, getting pressure on a quarterback, being able to protect your quarterback. Lions have arguably the best offensive line in the league. It goes, the edge here goes to the Lions at home as three and a half point favorites. Let's do it for Sunday Night Football. Last one, and I won't spend much time here. Jets at the 49ers, Niners minus four and a half at home, 44 point total. The reason for this is because I will have a full video on this game for Monday. It'll come out Monday morning, so make sure to check it out here. Um, I like the Jets at, at four, as four and a half point dogs. I know Trent Williams uh, is, is finally ending that holdout. First of all, we don't even know if he's certain to play. Second off, we don't know what he's going to be like if he does play. And, you know, if he's not 100% or if he's not on the field, he is not the same guy. Also, say what you want, but the Super Bowl hangover is real. Maybe not so much in recent years, but teams coming off Super Bowl losses have really struggled in week one. And now you've got a four and a half point dog, division, uh, a non-conference opponent on Monday night football. Look, the, I'm not betting the Jets money line here, but I think four and a half points is too big. Consider this, look, Aaron Rodgers doesn't have to be great. He just doesn't, he just can't be terrible. The Jets defense last year and the Jets defense this year, they are superb, all right? Zach Wilson and whoever else they decide to run out there the past couple of years, awful. They have been wasting away at the Meadowlands until now. Aaron Rodgers just needs to be okay. Garrett Wilson, Mike Wilson's going to be out. Uh, uh, Mike Williams is going to be out there as well. Brees Hall, they've got studs. They're loaded up. And you've got San Francisco 49ers coming off of that Super Bowl loss. All of the stars align here. I'll talk about it more on Monday. I appreciate you guys watching. Hit me up at Lafayette underscore D on Twitter. Come hang in the marketplace. Say what's up in the chat. I'd love to have you over there, and we will catch you back here for the next one. Peace.